hello and welcome to another video. So today we are starting off my second vlog of December, my second vlog of Vlogmas. Um, so I'm planning on reading some holiday romances in this vlog. Um, I'm not entirely sure quite what I'm going to read. I think I want to try and read. I don't have any of the books with me. I'm just going to put up Gonna, gonna make Edith and Jenny's life difficult and put the pictures up here. I want to read um, Make Your Mind This Christmas. This I got in a Luma Crate box last year and didn't read it. Um, it's a queer Christmas romance, so let's see, looks fun. Um, I wanna read Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. I just really like Tessa Bailey, that's it. And I want to read The Christmas Bookshop by Jenny Colgan. Um, I like Jenny Colgan. I think that she writes really, really cute stories. So I want to see what this one's about, whether this one looks like it's going to be a fun one. Um, I don't really know what my plans are this week. Um, again, I know, I know I said this last week and I didn't do it, but I would like to try and get to some Christmas markets at some point, um, for no other reason than I wanna. Um, if I don't, it's not the end of the world, let's be honest. Um... Yeah, I, I, I don't really know what I'm doing this week at all. Um, it's really, really cold today, so I don't know whether I'm going to do anything more than walking the dog. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my reading plans for the week. Um, I want to read some Christmas, romance, some Christmas romances. I have got a couple of other Christmas romances on my Kindle. So I've got The Naughty or Nice Claws. Um, which is an arc that I downloaded last year and didn't read. And I've got Holly Jolly Ever After, um, which I read, so that's by Julia, someone, and Sierra Simone. Um, and I read their book, A Merry Little Meet Cute, last year and I really, really loved it. So I'm excited to read Holly Jolly Ever After. Don't know if I'm going to get to it this week. Um, I do have another week planned where I'm going to be reading festive books but again that's not necessarily going to be festive romances um but yeah if I get to them this week amazing I five books in a week sounds a little bit over ambitious but we will see um I don't think I've got anything else to say <laughs> I'm gonna go and start reading and I will catch up with you later bye good morning it is Friday morning, 1st of December. I've got a very, very bouncy dog next to me, so she might be bouncing in frame in a minute. Um, I have finished reading Make You Mine this Christmas. So I actually finished it last night. Um, I ended up just binging it. I think I think I read about 250 pages in, in one sitting last night. And I, I haven't yet rated it, so I'm gonna come back later with like full like review and everything like that but fucking please go away darling go off go out off but I did want to um come in and kind of give like my sort of I guess like my top line thoughts um so first of all I really really liked the rep in this I thought it was I thought it was fantastic with the amount of rep the variety of rep and also I felt I am not own voices but I felt like it was fairly well done throughout so we have um lots of queer rep there is bi there is lesbian there's non-binary um we have fat rep we have disability rep um the main cat well one of the main characters has got ehlers danlos syndrome um which i think is is great to see um they're great to see representation of we have got mental health rep they're speaking of anxiety and parental pressure in the author's note, she says that she wrote the main character to be autistic coded, which I personally didn't pick up on, but um, I think is again, fantastic to have there included as the more rep. Um, so that was fantastic. I wasn't the biggest fan of the writing. Like I said before, it's written in third person present, which just kind of threw me slightly. Like I can't really explain why. Um, and I felt like the the plot itself was, well, fun, was a little bit kind of slow and, and didn't have quite the right pacing for me. Um, but I did really like it. I am recommending this book to many people. Um, I already have got... 
Hello, good evening. Um, it is like 7 p.m. at night. Um, I realized that I meant to come back in after I walked the dog and um give you my like thoughts and review on making mine this Christmas. I didn't do that. But thoughts and review on making mine's Christmas, gave it a 3.5, really, really liked the rep. I found that it was a the romance is a little bit too slow for me. It also is a clean romance, which I'm a smutty reader. Speaking of, I'm currently reading window shopping. Um, I am over halfway through. It's getting very smutty. Um, it's really, really good. So we've got, this is like a workplace romance. Um, but what I'm really liking so far is Stella, our main female character, um, has just got out of prison. So I'm really liking that is a kind of real different um, character than what I've seen before. Um, so yeah, really enjoying this so far. It's a super ditty book. It's like 250 pages, um, but I'm enjoying it. And I'm gonna get back, back to it. They've just got to Stella's flat, you know. Hello, I am, um, put a light on. Um, so I have finished reading Window Shopping. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, it literally almost made me cry towards the get one. I was in the bath and it did almost make me cry at the end. Um, but yeah, really, really loved it. I thought it was just really good. Um, like I was saying earlier, I really liked how our female character, Stella, was had just been released from prison. I thought that was a really interesting sort of character characteristic. Um, and I I liked that Aiden had like different side to him. So yes, he was this sort of very nice gentleman in public, but an absolute filth bag in private. And honestly, I thought the smart was quite good without being like kind of over the top or um, overtaking the plot itself. I have now started on The Christmas Bookshop by Jenny Colgan. Um, somehow, this is, I've started my third book of the month and it is the first of the month. Um, I think I'm going to, well, this week's read and vlog was supposed to be um, romances, Christmas romances. Unfortunately, all the rest of my Christmas romances are on my Kindle and I've put my Kindle somewhere and I don't know where I've put it. <laughs> I thought I knew where I put it. I had put it on like on a random bookshelf, um, but it's not there anymore. I've moved it and I don't know where, where it is now. Um, but I know I've got at least two other Christmas romances on my Kindle. Hello. It looks like it's a lot darker than it is. It's about 4.30. Um, but it is getting dark out and um, I went on a long walk this morning with little Miss Bracken. I'm going to take my hair down so I don't look like quite so much of a bald egg. Um, and then I've pretty much been curled up in this exact same spot on the sofa for the rest of the day. And uh, I, I finished another book. So I finished reading The Christmas Bookshop by Jenny Colgan. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, I don't remember if I gave you my rating for window shopping, but I gave it four stars and I'm giving this one four stars as well. This is a completely clean romance. I really liked it. It was so heartwarming. Um, I mean, there's not even kissing. It is that much of like a clean romance. It is so, so wholesome. But I really loved that the, the premise is that Carmen um, has lost her job that she's been in for for years and she moves in with her sister in Edinburgh. Her sister is a hotshot lawyer and has a client who is about to lose his shop if he can't make any money. Carmen has always worked in shops so her sister basically gets her a job. Carmen and her sister um, really don't get on at all. Um, Carmen thinks that Sophia is like the favourite child and gets everything she ever wants and you know nothing's ever difficult for her and Sophia, Sophia or Sophia, Sophia maybe, um, thinks that Carmen is just kind of spoiled and just needs to basically pull her finger out and, and 
do the work. Um, so it, they're quite, it's quite tense them, them living together. Sophia is also very pregnant with her fourth child, which is another thing which Carmen is like, oh, another child. She's just so attention seeking. Um, so at first I didn't really like Carmen. I was like, come on, babe, you're, I think she's about 13. And it's just like, grow up seriously grow up like what are you doing um just like with the way that she sort of treats her sister and, and acts basically like a moody teenager but as as we go on and you kind of you see that she's got some sort of like like a, there's a there's a damaged person underneath there um so she's working in this bookshop she's trying to turn this bookshop around and and actually help it turn a profit she ends up meeting this guy who is a very, very famous author. He's a famous like self-development author uh, called Blair Fan Fanning or something. Can't remember how you say his last name. It's got a P and an F in it and I got confused. Um, and this guy is like literally like, like you know, he's he's that that pretty self-care person that is always on like this morning and stuff like that. So everybody knows who he is. Um, and he starts flirting with Carmen. She's like, oh my God, <laughs> he likes me. However, he then sleeps with Skylar, who is her sister Sophia's nanny. She and Skylar do not get on. Um, they kind of have this, like, almost rivalry. But basically, Skylar's just a bit of a bitch. Um, anyway, I'm getting really far into it. But, like, yeah, we then... Carmen also meets this other guy called Oki, who is just, like, a super, super cute professor. It's just so heartwarming and adorable. But yeah, basically, I really, really loved, I really enjoyed the sister dynamic because they, they're not friends. They don't get on. They have nothing in common. And they're sort of being forced by their mum to spend this time together, each basically being coerced into thinking that they are doing a favour for the other. So, you know, Carmen's there because fine I have to help Sophia while she's really pregnant and Sophia's like okay fine she can stay with me and I'll help her get a job whereas you know actually they they are helping each other um I loved seeing Carmen grow with the children because obviously like I said Sophia's already got three children the relationship was adorable it was just such a cute wholesome book I really really enjoyed it anywho Somehow I've read three books since the 2nd of December and I don't understand how I've done that. But we're going to keep going. Clearly Christmas romances are the way to go right now. I am about to start reading The Naughty or Nice Claws by Kate Callahan. Um, so this is an arc that I got last year and did not read. So um, this one is only short. It's only about 250 pages. Um, and yeah, I'm going to read that one now. I do also have downloaded... A Holly, a Holly Jolly Christmas by I think it's Julia Murphy and Sierra Sim Simone. Um, I read A Merry Little Meet Cute last year and adored it. It was so good. Um, and I'm hoping from the same, from I'm fairly certain it's called Holly Jolly Christmas, but I might be getting the name wrong. Um, yeah, but so I'm looking forward to that. I think after A Holly Jolly Christmas, that will be all of my Christmas romances read. Um, I'm probably not going to just start downloading more Christmas romances for the sake of it because there are, I've got quite a lot of other stuff that I do want to get read this month. So I'll probably go back into final books and read either the Golden Enclaves or um, A Guess of True Love once I have finished up all of my Christmas romances, even though I'm clearly enjoying them at the moment. So on to book number four of December. Hello, it is about 2.30 on Sunday. Um, I've just finished reading The Naughty or Nice Claws. I wasn't the biggest fan. Um, this is an arc that I got on NetGalley last year. And um, honestly, it's just kind of boring. And so we follow Lyra, who um, basically owns a toy company but Mr. Klaus has kind of taken over the company. Um, anyway, it turns out that, that his last name, which I'm pronouncing as Klaus, but might be meant to be pronounced as Claus, um, because he comes from the magical world of Yule, 
where and it turns out that he is Santa Claus. Honestly, it just felt really like, what the actual fuck? It, it, yeah. Yeah, it's not for me. Um, it was one of those where I was just like, this is a bit silly. I don't feel like bringing the magic and making him Santa Claus worked I didn't think the writing was great it was a bit all over the place um yeah so I've read that I'll um pop it through core pile and write a review for net galley in a bit but it, it, it's it's not going to be one that I'm going to recommend people to to sort of um read as like a, a top Christmas book but on to my fifth and final Christmas romance, I'm going to start reading A Holly Jolly Ever After by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. I am expecting this one to be all kinds of filth and I am excited for it. Um, these are the same authors that wrote A Merry Little Meet Cute, which I read last year and absolutely loved. Um, so A Merry Little Meet Cute followed a porn star um, who was trying to break into like hallmark movies um i don't know quite what the um plot of where is it here we go a holly jolly ever after will be but i am expecting it to be smutty and sexy and not the cute cover that is that it looks like it's going to be um but yeah that's my update and I will catch up with you. Good morning. It is Monday morning. Um, and just to say it's a quick update. I uh, I finished reading A Holly Jolly Ever After last night. Um, so that is now five books that I have read. Well, I guess in, in three days. Today is the fourth. <laughs> so that's crazy. Um, I can get off. Off, good girl. I have read all of the Christmas romances that I currently own so I'm gonna stop reading Christmas romances because I'm not gonna just start downloading them for the sake of it. Stop it. Good girl. But I'm about to start reading A Curse for True Love. I'm super super hyped for this one. I really love the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. I think it is so beautiful. The writing is so whimsical. And also I feel like it is still kind of festive because um, the whimsicalness and the magnific magnificent north setting just kind of gives me wintry, Christmassy, december -y vibes. So yeah, I'm excited to read A Curse of True Love. I don't think I'm going to read this one in, you know, less than a day at the rate I have been currently going. But I also don't think it's going to be a super quick read because it's a YA fantasy is the last in the trilogy of the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. Um, I'm really excited to finish this series. I'm also kind of sad because I this series is fantastic. I I kind of want to reread Caravelle, um, just to kind of get back in that world at the beginning, and yeah I don't really know what else I've got to say to be totally honest I still haven't actually rated um good morning it is Tuesday morning um I don't remember whether I gave you reviews yesterday so I'm gonna do that now and if I've already done that then I'll cut this bit out um so over the weekend I read The Naughty and Nice Claws by Kate Callahan. I gave that one three stars it was fine it was well I say it was fine like it was it was okay I just felt like I, I don't think that the the weird magic needed to be involved um so it was about it was kind of like a uh sleeping with your boss romance except your boss is Santa Claus and you didn't know that and just it was just a bit weird it wasn't it wasn't my favorite 
Um, and then I also read A Holly Jolly Meet. No, A Holly Jolly Ever After, which I absolutely loved. I gave it 4.5 stars. Really, really enjoyed that one. I thought that one was so much fun. And yeah, had a really, really great time. Yesterday, I picked up A Curse for True Love. And in apparent classic Jenny fashion, I am currently 250 pages through. Like I said, I started this yesterday morning. And I had work all day yesterday. Um, but... I'm obsessed. I am loving this so much. Um, so this is the third in the trilogy, um, the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. So I'm not going to tell you too much about the contents of this book because spoilers. Um, but Once Upon a Broken Heart follows Evangeline Fox. It is a spin-off to the Caraval series. So Evangeline goes to the um, Magnificent North where she meets Jax, who is the kind of connection to the Caraval series. Um, and in the north there is a story curse where you can't tell stories stories will all get kind of like twisted um, and yeah basically we, we follow our characters um, I'm not going to tell you too much more I, I'm sorry that's a very, that, that I wasn't telling you anything then um, but yeah I, I don't want to inadvertently spoil anything but I really love this series. I love the writing. It is so whimsical and so magical. I adore the characters. Evangeline and Jax are just my favourites. They are... I, I just... I want to wrap them up and make them be happily ever after. Um, but I also really love the kind of... The magic and the, the story of this trilogy. I just think it is fantastic. Um... Yeah, I I'm I really really enjoy this series. Hi Bracken, my darling. I don't need your face. I don't need your nose in my face. Thank you. Go 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 away. Bracken wants to go for a walk. Um I should be taking her out for a walk, but I have not yet. Um but yeah, basically my my thoughts are so far that I am really really enjoying the Curse of True Love. Um I'm really interested to see where it's going to go. Like, I've got about 150 pages left. And I would like it to end with, like, a happily ever after. For Evangeline and Jax. And I don't know if it will. I mean, I, you know when you're kind of like, I don't, I just don't know. I just don't know. Um, but, yeah, I am. I'm really enjoying it. Anyway, that's my, that's my reading update. Um... I have got work today. I've got quite a lot of work that I need to catch up on. I also want to film a few more videos for Vlogmas. Let me know down below. Are you enjoying Vlogmas so far? Please tell me you are. Um, yeah, so I, I, I want to film a few more videos. I'm going away. So I'm going back down to my parents on Saturday. And then I'm basically away for the week. And so even though I am... I'm like kind of caught up with videos. I still want to make sure that I'm still have got that little bit ahead. Um, just so I'm not kind of stressing that I've got like a week's worth of videos to get up on the Saturday when I come back home. Um, but I'm really enjoying Vlogmas. I've had a great time like filming all my videos. I'm doing my tea advent calendar each day as well, which is fun. Um, Bracken's absolutely desperate to go out. She's just giving me her paw at the moment. <laughs> but thank you I don't want your foot um anyway I'm gonna go out and um I know lovely I know you're such a good girl you're such a good girl aren't you good good girl um hello it's Tuesday evening and I have just finished reading A Curse for True Love and honestly I'm obsessed I just I love this book so much it looks like I've cut my hair I haven't my hair is all still here it's just it's just hiding um anywho A Curse for True Love I'm obsessed um so so good so good I I really really loved it like throughout I wanted Jackson and Evangeline to get their happily ever after um but I loved like how we had the memory loss with the amnesia trope um, and how everything got kind of like fixed and um, oh, I just really, really like it. 
My one critique is I do feel like the pacing was a little bit off on this one. Um, I felt like everything happened in the last sort of 100 pages and it just all happened a little bit too quickly. Um, so for example, La La returns about 100 pages from the end and there's been no kind of explanation as to why she hasn't been here for the last sort of like 300 pages of the book. Um, she just wasn't there. And just there were like kind of a couple bits where I was like, hmm, I want to know what's been happening here. I feel like we're just missing a little bit, like it's a little bit rushed towards the end. But I really liked how it was left open for another spin-off trilogy. I honestly will just eat up anything that Stephanie Garber writes in this world. I think it's incredible. And um, I was speaking to my friend Juliana about this because I'm kind of over YA. I'm, I'm just, I'm not not really enjoying any YA that I read at the moment. Um, but this series, which honestly kind of, kind of has all of the tropes that I'd be like, probably not for me, let's be honest. But somehow, somehow the way that Stephanie Garber does it is just perfection. And I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed, what can I say? Um, so yeah, I'm going to go and find another new book. Um, I think, I think I need to read a book for work next. Well, there's two books that I need to read. I've got The Widow's Choice by Nancy Revel, which is a book for work. And I've got Raw by someone, Cara something. I don't know who it's by. Um, which I need to read before next week for a book swap I'm doing with my friends. Um, so my plan was to read Raw next because I can like get that done and then it's it's done. But I also, I kind of feel like I should probably read The Widow's Choice. I should probably read that one because it is for work. Then I can kind of move on and move on. But I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and decide. Raw is shorter, so there is that. But Raw is a YA. Do I want to read another YA? Like I said, I'm not massively into YAs at the moment. Do I want to read another YA? Having just loved a YA, does that mean I'm going to be more into YA? How many times can I say YA in a sentence? Or am I going to dislike it because it doesn't live up to a girl's true love? I just don't know. Don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go and just like decide and I'll... Okay, I decided not to read the book for work like I probably should, but instead I'm reading War by Cora Carmack. So I'm going to just read out the synopsis for this one, because I've never heard of it before. Uh, legend says that Aurora Pavin's ancestors first gained their magic by facing a storm and stealing part of its essence. Aurora has been groomed to be the perfect queen, but she's yet to show any trace of the magic she'll need to protect her people. To keep her secret and save her crown, she'll have to marry a dark and brooding stormling prince from another kingdom. He'll guarantee her spot as the next queen and be the champion her people need to remain safe. But the more Aurora uncovers about him, the more a future with him frightens her. When a handsome young storm hunter reveals he was born without magic but possesses it now, Aurora realises there's a third option for her future beside ruin or marriage. She might not have magic now, but she can steal it if she's brave enough. Um, so me and three friends are doing like a kind of book loop, book swap thing where we each read a book, annotate it, pass on to the next one. So this one is full of annotations from my friend Alexis. Um, she really, really loves it, this book. Like I said, I've not heard of it before. It is, it's blurbed by Jennifer L. Armentrout, but it is very YA without any kind of spice or, or smuttiness. So, interesting. Written in 2017, so it could, so it's kind of like, I feel like this is gonna be peak YA. I'm gonna, I think what I'm gonna do is read the first couple of chapters now. It's, what time is it? Half eight, yeah, probably gonna read like maybe the first chapter or two now. Um, and then I'm going to watch TV for a bit because I'm um, a little bit kind of reading out, read out, worded out. 
clearly can't talk so you know your brain is not working um but yeah that's my plan so i will hello from a, apparently a boiled egg um i just thought i'd jump in because i'm going to be wrapping this vlog up so i'm currently reading raw i'm like 80 pages in i'm not loving it it's it's very ya and it is it's very like well, it was written in 2017 and it is very 2017 YA. Um, you know, like things like the the female loving, you know, the female main character is really like, I'm not like other girls. I can do this, I can do that. I'm the best, blah, blah, blah. The male uh, main, main character is really snarky and full of banter, except he's not. He's basically just bullying her. Like, I'm really uncomfortable with the language um, and how, like, emotionally manipulative the male main character is. Um, I really don't like him. Um, and I feel as well, and this is, this is, this is like a very specific irritant. But there was a scene in here when our female main character was throwing knives, right? She's not like other girls. She can throw knives and she's really strong, amazing, great. We love it. And um, the the male main character who is betrothed to her, they are they are apparently engaged. He's all like, Meh, he's he's making noises, and she basically challenges him to stand in front of a board and she'll throw knives at him. So she does. She throws three knives. They go on either side of his neck and between his legs. Great. Leave it there. Fantastic. Instead, what happens is the male main character wants to go. They swap positions, she's against the board, he throws the knives all around her body. And the problem, like, my issue with that is that completely demeans her abilities. It's now made that ability of throwing knives, like, with such precision, 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 to be really, like, basic, like, anyone can do this. He's just proved that he can do it with, you know, no issues. And it's, and I just think, well... You wanted to show that she, you know, wasn't like other girls and was able to do all this exciting stuff. And instead, you've made her un her unique skill be really mainstream. Um, and that irritates me. And it's something that I've kind of noticed in YA where they do things like that. And I'm like, that doesn't, to me, show that he is, like, full of banter and snark and all of that kind of crap. Um, because also, I'm sorry... But I, the banter that they have in here is awful, in my opinion. Like, I'm just there like, this is cringy. You, you know, you're not bantering. Like, I feel like the word banter has been really misused, particularly in YA. Because for me, banter is when you bounce off each other. You know, it's not, it's not just like an offhand comment that is a little bit funny or like could be construed as amusing. It needs to bounce and that that never seems to happen in like the YA books that are like marketed. It's like full of banter. Anyway, so yeah, raw, not loving it. Um, I do want to. I really would like to finish this. So this is part of like a, a book loop that I'm doing with um with my friends where we're all reading a book, annotating it, and then like passing it on. So I would really like to finish it. But I'm not 100% sure that I'm able to. Like, I, I'm going to give it probably until about the 200 page mark. How long is this book? Oh, it's not that long. 375 pages. Let's say I'll give it to the 150 page mark and see where we're at. But I'm struggling so far. And then the other book that I'm currently reading is The Widow's Choice by Nancy Ravel. This is a book I'm reading for work. Um, it's a historical fiction. It's not my usual type of historical fiction, but um, it's for work. So I'm not going to sort of talk too much about that one. But I have read so far this so far this week. I've read five holiday romances and a curse for true love. So I've read six books this week, which is absolutely crazy talk. Um, so I'm going to finish this vlog up now. I don't really know. Oh, excuse me. Oh, tired. 
Um, so I'm going to finish this vlog up now and um, I will see you tomorrow. I don't know what my vlog plans for next week are. I think, so next week um, it is my work, my tandem's like annual festive retreat. Um, so I am on Saturday driving back down to Devon because my parents are going to be looking after my pets while I'm away. Then Tuesday through to Thursday I'm at the retreat. So for quite a lot of this week's vlog, I'm not going to be necessarily reading a lot. Um, I think my plan is to read my anticipated books. So I'd like to try and read, I think I'm going to pick up The Golden Enclaves because it is still very anticipated. Also, I want to read Yellow Face and Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. Um, so I want to try and read those books that were on my um, seven books to read before the end of the year, TBR. I've read one of them so far. Um, so that's kind of my plans for next week. You'll obviously have to tune into next week's vlog to see how I do or if I do anything. Um, but yeah, I'm going to wrap it up for this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, leave me a like, subscribe down below and I will be seeing you tomorrow.